This is an app called TransitViz, and it's our entry into the 2013 Urban Data Challenge. The purpose of the app is to let users see transit data over a geographic area for a given time period, in this case a Monday between 6.30 and 9 a.m. You can select individual data fields or multiple data fields to see what, what may be going on at individual stops. So here we're looking at the number of passengers getting on and off at particular stops over a given time period. And these are aggregate numbers, so it's counting all the people getting on and off in the data set. And again, this is for Monday morning. And you can get a general sense of what's going on. People tend to come from the outer part of the city and get off in the inner part, which is uh, the sort of pattern you'd expect. Now, with this tool, you can look at particular days. For example, we switch to Tuesday here. You can also change the time period and query based on that. You can also look at individual stops. So if you tap on one of these columns, it'll show you what stop that represents and the, the data values for the query that you just made and the number, the particular routes for that stop as well. Now you can also drill down. So let's take a look at an individual route here, the 12 and 12B. Now in that case, we're just going to see the stops associated with those routes. And it's a much cleaner display. There's less going on here. Similar pattern, and you can see certain things stand out, certain stops. And you can, uh, again, you can query individual ones and see what's going on. So for example, you see the, the absolute values here are much lower, uh, but we've had auto scale on, so it's hard to kind of visually compare them. The, the Bel Air stop, for example, we've got 2,300 people getting off and almost 1,000 getting on over that period. And if we switch to a different day, we should see similar patterns there during the week. Now, again, we've been using auto scale here, so all the, the data is scaled to the same absolute value. If we turn that off, then we can compare things at an absolute uh, value. So we won't rescale each time. So we can see uh, Saturday, for example, has much lower traffic than during the week, which is kind of the pattern you'd expect. And again, those numbers are much lower over that time period. Now, if we switch to a different line, we can also get a sense of its absolute traffic over that time period. In this case, the one. And we see that the numbers are much lower for that particular time, 6.30 to 9 in the morning on a Saturday. And you wouldn't expect a lot of traffic there. Let's take a look at the San Francisco data set. Now, much like in Geneva, we'll start out looking at the whole data set and we'll be looking at the data covering the period from 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., more or less the morning commute on Monday. And in this case, we're just looking at the passengers boarding for uh, buses because the bus data is all we had in this case. Now, you can get some general trends from this. You can see where the most activity is. It looks like downtown. Uh, with a few outlying areas also being important. Daily City is a big one for some of the routes. But let's drill down to a specific line here, the 22, which runs through this part of the city. That's an interesting one because it's going through a lot of high traffic areas. Now let's take a look at passengers getting on and getting off. In this case, uh, the passengers getting on are in red and the passengers getting off are in blue. And we can select individual stops to see what they are. So that big spike there is a, essentially a subway station intersection. And there's also another one at the end of the line. And you can poke around here and see what's going on at individual stops. And the next thing you can do is uh, take a look at, for example, the evening commute, see how that compares. Now in this case we had auto scale turned on, so we can't really visually compare how things look. So an obvious thing to do is turn that off and then look at, uh, for example, another period, Tuesday, and see how that compares in absolute numbers. Work our way through the rest of the week, see how the numbers move around. It's interesting how they, they change over the week, although this is just a single week's worth of data. So it's hard to say how that would normally compare. 
Saturday's obviously busy, and in this case, Sunday's what you'd expect. There's a lot less traffic. And the traffic moves around. So for example, uh, this data point out here is fairly high. Uh, we've got 62 passengers boarding over that period. And it's quite likely that there was some sort of event or something interesting going on down there. There often is. So let's take a look at a different set of data fields. We've been looking at passengers getting on and off, but this data set also has information on how long a bus waits at a particular location, the door dwell time and the, the wait dwell time. We'll take a look at those. Now those units are obviously different than number of people, so we need to rescale. And a few data points really jump out here. Obviously at the end of the routes, the buses are waiting probably uh, for the, the start of the next route. You can kind of poke around here and look for different spikes and try to understand what they are. So let's take a look here, for example. Uh, there's a big one at 16th and Bryant. Now, I personally don't know much about why that would be. I, I think you'd probably need other information as to why there'd be a spike there. And this is only a week's worth of data. So again, we don't really, we don't really have overall trends. But it's interesting to poke around in. So that's it for our app TransitViz, which is our entry into the Urban Data Challenge for 2013. We've had a great time messing around with the data, and uh, I appreciate all the, the cities who got their data sets together. It has been very interesting looking at those and trying to understand things from them. The app itself, TransitViz, is going on the App Store for free, and we're also distributing the source code. It's based on an open source toolkit, which is also available for free. So if you want to dig in and do your own thing with this, this app, feel free. And if you get your data into the right format, you can even add that to the app without having to do any recompiling. And we're excited to see what other people do.